Hey everybody, before we start today's podcast, we wanted to make a very special announcement. Jake's pregnant. That's exactly what it was. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm going to be a mom. So Can you believe uh, it? I can't. I mean, I really cannot believe it. Uh, actually, what the announcement is, is that we got our very first sponsor for If I Were You. And uh, it's actually extra cool because it's with a company that we already use and love. It's called Frank and Oak. That's right. Frank and Oak is basically a website slash company that makes cool, affordable men's clothing. I use it already. That's why we even contacted Frank and Oak to begin with because we wanted to promote a product that we already use so we didn't feel gross about promoting it. That's right. Uh, and they got back to us, and they were super friendly. They want to help us out. So if you are at all interested in looking better without spending too much money. Or if you know somebody that looks like garbage, you want to help them out. That's right. Go to www.frankenoak.com. Slash if I were you. Check out their stuff. See if you like it. If you want to support us, I mean, you're already doing that by listening, but you could do it a little bit more by going to this URL. And if you like something, that's even better. You can buy it using our code, which is going to give you 10% off. The code is if I were you 10. That's the number 10. Yeah, so go check it out. Look at the styles. And if you like what you see, help us out. Help you out. It's a win-win situation. Oh, my God, situation. you're a sellout. What are you talking you're about? You're a sellout. For the first 80% of this plug, you're on board. And then yeah, all but now sudden... people are going to remember that I called you a sellout, and they'll turn on you, not me. <laughs> anyway, the URL one last time is frankenoak.com slash if I were you. Let us know what you think, and enjoy the show. You're lost and confused, and it's no surprise. What you need is advice from these two wise guys. If I were you, here's what I'd do. But email them, they'll sort it out for you on this podcast. Cute. Very cute. It's Loved actually, it. it might be too cute. Yeah, rewind it. <laughs> we never played it. <laughs> hey, welcome to If I Were You, the only advice possible. Oh no! Holy shit! <laughs> now we really need to rewind this, or we just turn this into an advice pasta, like I said. <laughs> the only advice pasta eaten on the internet <laughs> by us. The only advice podcast on the internet, hosted by us. I'm Amir Blumenfeld, and I'm Jake Hurwitz. You know what it is? I'm trying to find out who wrote that song while I'm speaking at oh, the same time. I think her name was. Julie O'Brien. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Thanks so much to Julie O'Brien for sending in that theme song. We're trying to play a new theme song in every single episode, and so far it's worked out. Yeah. Thanks to you guys. We get uh, submissions at our email, which is if I were you show at gmail.com, and if it's good, we'll play it at the beginning or the end of the podcast. It's truth. Um, so if this is your first time listening to this podcast – Turn it off. We don't need you. <laughs> if you weren't here from the beginning, <laughs> then you're not worth it to us. We, we are the most exclusive podcast on the internet. We have our fan base, and we don't want any more. So if you hear your friends being like, hey, I'm just actually getting into this podcast, you'd be like, yo, no. I was into it at episode one. <laughs> and they don't need your support. You haven't even heard Seize the Cheese. You haven't earned it. <laughs> if you don't know Seize the Cheese by now, you don't deserve to listen to this podcast. Jerks. <laughs> we started from the bottom and we're still there. <laughs> um, so how it works is we get real emails from real people about, you know, they're just sticky, difficult, conundrumical situations. Conundrumical Contra- cannot be a word, is it? <laughs> no, definitely not. I also oh. said conundrumical. Conundrumical. <laughs> situations. And we <laughs> offer up advice, often um, incorrect advice, but... You know, at the very least, we're honest with ourselves. We're trying. You're really going to fault us for trying? Oh, my God. How are you pissed at us? Sorry. I always just get angry at the audience. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, we get – those emails are submitted to us on our email, which is, like I said before, if I were you show at gmail.com. Please, if you are in any difficult situation – Email it in. We're having an amazing time. I check that email more than my actual email because it's more entertaining. It's true. What what's gonna, what's in my actual email? My I mean, mom. You're, you're, yeah, your parents have been trying to get in touch with you for a very long time. Yeah, actually. I don't need. If they can get in touch with me, they would listen to the show and and write in. Do a five you show. Oh, there it is. My son yeah. won't return any of my. Okay, so let's give this wow. person <laughs> uh, anonymous. Making up a name. <laughs> we'll call him. Uh, geez, Jerome B. <laughs> no, that's too obvious. <laughs> Dad Blumenfeld. Um, yeah. Uh, did I forget to mention anything? Um, 
I don't think so. So we might. But well, there's a possibility that I'm also forgetting to mention something. Let's well, just, I don't, let's get into it. Though. Yeah, let's hop right in. Um, as always, we'll we will never say your real name. We're gonna make up a fake name to this real email, and we'll call this person Homer. Homer. Homer writes. So my girlfriend of just over a year went to Israel on a church trip, and upon her return, told me that she jerked off a 33-year-old married dude. I love her, and I want to let it slide, but I don't want to seem weak. So do I end it, or try to forgive and move on? Wow. (laughs) She came back from Israel and was just like, just straight up told him all of the facts right away. It's very specific. It was a very specific confession. Like, hey, Homer, um, Homie. look, I jerked off a 33-year-old married Holy guy. Holy shit. Yeah, I know. I just asked I you how the hummus was, and you're <laughs> dropping that? Wow. I love that he's like, I love her. The, yeah. Like, the first part of this email should, uh, you know, you shouldn't, right? <laughs> <laughs> she went away, uh, broke up your relationship, and maybe a marriage. <laughs> Uh, should he let it slide? He doesn't want to seem weak. Yeah, you are weak. <laughs> uh, don't let it. Should I let it slide? Much like my girlfriend's hand up and down the <laughs> shaft of a of a man with a freaking wedding ring on his hand. I mean, holy shit! Was this guy even thirty three year old trip? married dude? <laughs> was, was this married dude even on this church trip? Oh my god! What kind? Of, by the way, this, all in the name of God, too. Yeah, there's it, there's a level of irony here that they're on a church trip. I assume this church preaches uh, against adultery enough for, sure. for the, to convince them to go to Israel together, and then they're just like, "We like the church, but at the same time, I'm going to give this guy a handy." <laughs> I like this guy more than the church. <laughs> <laughs> oh mercy! What you never hear about a girl cheating on a guy with just a hand job? Yeah, just a hand job. That's so clinical. I think that, like, given the circumstances, uh, you'll never be able to forget this. You will never be able to like move on from. You know, maybe she like, she's like, oh, I hooked up with a guy on the trip. And you're like, you know what? I don't want to know anything. Just like, let's. It was in Israel. You know, you're young. This is. <laughs> You went on an adventure, you know? It's a very religious, spiritual place, yeah. and uh, the power of God moved you yeah. up and down and his shaft. Feel... <laughs> she feels remorse, so, you know, you take her back. But she's like, you know too many details. If you know that many details, like, you're just going to be at the movies. She holds your hand, and you're like, oh, no, this was used to <laughs> masturbate a married guy while we were together. Well, that's I not was just... fair. There's a 50% chance to use the other hand. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> Would you? Ra- Here's a question. Would you rather your girlfriend tell you that uh, she made out with another guy or just jerked off another guy, no kissing? God. What's worse? I think, well, kissing's more intimate, sort of. Yeah. It's like an exchange of fluids. I mean, ma- jerking somebody off is just like... But it's sexual. Right. right. It's just. I mean, I think it's so foul... <laughs> <laughs> that, like, I'd be more mad about that. It's like there's some kind of weird, like, animalistic thing. Like, some dude just, like, got gratification from my girlfriend. Like, no, that's not fair. That's not allowed. That's my like, girlfriend's hand. Yeah, like, it's your girlfriend. You, like, put up with, you know, like, the highs and lows. Like, everything. You're there for her when she's sad. You're there for her when she's sick. You you care about her hopes and dreams. And then just some married stranger on a bus gets to come in her hand. <laughs> she gave him the highs and the lows. <laughs> I don't think it's fair. Uh, my advice is to break up with her, and next girl that cheats on you, find out no details at all. If you like, want to, because I know people like people mess up, and you want to like move on. But I think the way to do it is not by knowing every single detail. It's so funny to tell a guy that you jerked off a thirty-three-year-old married guy. Why did you even? I, I, this girl's listening. Why did you tell him all of the details? If he's like, you know, what happened? Like, you should have said it's not important. Don't be like. I jerked off this guy. Like, who was he? Some married dude. I didn't say that it was on a bus because I just picture it happening on a bus. <laughs> yeah, that's so weird. I also imagine a bus, but it does not mention bus at all. That's so weird. I, we would love it because you, uh, Sir Homer, you clearly got a lot of the deets. Email us. Let us know if it was on a bus. At the very least, you tell like, us where this was. <laughs> I wanted to see if I'm intuitive. <laughs> like, like some perverted game of Clue. We want to know where this took place. It was my girlfriend on a bus with her hand. So 
would you say if I were you, you would break up with this girl? Yes. Because of, you know, what if it was just squeezing, not even a jerking off motion? She just, just squeezed, squeezed his it. balls. I no, yeah, that's not much. I'm, that's probably fine. <laughs> squeeze is fine. I guess like I seize don't know. the squeeze. Seize the squeeze. I would like to to know like what made her do it and if she might do it again. <laughs> yeah, where do you draw the line? If I were you, I would break up with her. But since I'm not you, I was the guy on the bus. <laughs> oh my god, that's right. I'm 33. People, 33, happily married, and I got handies <laughs> on the bus. Wait, what would you do? I uh, know you break us. Yeah, I would break up with someone that you know, jerk someone else off. <laughs> That's just a weird thing to do in general. I think like kissing is almost like, oh man, I was just, like in the moment staring at this person's eyes. We were in the, like in the holy land. <laughs> we're He's moved. gorgeous. <laughs> but like jerking somebody off is such a, like a commitment, you know, you like, <laughs> you have to grab it, make it hard. And then just like, you know, no, no, we know Everybody how knows, that, right? <laughs> For those of you guys who don't know, this is advice on how to, uh, how to give someone a hand job. A good hand job. It doesn't right. have to be good. Just uh, has to cheat on your boyfriend. That's it. <laughs> All right. So Homer, break up with Marge. Yes. Now let's get a new question. This one, real email, real person, fake name. We're given the name Bart. Bart. Bart writes. Can anyone come up with a theme of the names for this episode <laughs> right now? That's right. It's Matt Groening's family members. <laughs> um, hey, I'm a sophomore in high school, and I am leaving on a really long trip. I usually shave with an electric razor, but it's broken. My dad is never home to teach me how to shave. Should I wait for him to teach me, or should I just YouTube that shit? <laughs> oh no! Oh Bart, it's so. <laughs> it's you're, he's protecting himself. Should I YouTube that shit? My dad's not there for me. <laughs> Hey, um, my old man sort of neglects me. Should I YouTube shit? I don't know how to tie a tie. Uh, my dad promised to teach me, but he's always busy. Should I just YouTube that shit? My dad, uh, I stood in the backyard of our house for two and a half hours just tossing a baseball into my own glove. Should I YouTube that shit? Oh, my God. It's also funny because I can't imagine he grows a lot of facial hair. No. But it's like this is a big issue. It's just like... Hey, my dad's gonna teach me to shave. Oh wait, no, he's not. Maybe I'll YouTube that shit. Uh, <laughs> is the question: Should I YouTube this shit or wait for my dad to be there for me? Should I wait for him to teach me or should I YouTube? That <laughs> Just because uh, he told me he was going to the store ten years ago, uh, <laughs> I haven't heard from him. So I'm starting. I'm debating uh, whether or not to start YouTubing shit. <laughs> Someone needs to teach me how to be a man, and uh, it's either going to be my father or YouTube. Uh, should I set my mom up on a date, you know, help her find love again, or should I, uh, should I just YouTube that <laughs> shit? His dad, his dad is off uh, getting a hand job in Israel on a bus right now. His dad is 33. <laughs> um, Jesus, what's the advice? <laughs> I guess YouTube this shit. <laughs> Daddy's but, not going home. But more than anything, I'm sorry about your relationship with your father. <laughs> hey, I don't even know if I'll ever have a good uh, good father figure in my life. I don't even have an older brother, so should I... Uh, yeah, who's going to teach me how to be a better person? Or uh, should I YouTube that I wanna shit? I want to treat women right and sort of, you know, be the man of a house, but... Uh, I don't know. My dad kind of <laughs> sucks because he's never around. I'm starting to think I should just YouTube shit. <laughs> All right. I found some shit on YouTube, and I think, uh, I think I'm think i ready to be it. the dad my dad never was to me. There should be a sad YouTube channel that's like, Daddy's not here. <laughs> just, just all the things like, you know, how to hammer and nail. Everything your dad's supposed to teach you. My dad never taught me that. Did you YouTube that shit? I YouTube that shit. Thank <laughs> God. I guess another one of your options is to just buy a new electric razor, right? Nah, You're, at this going point, on a long trip. I mean, I feel like the there are definitely like undertones in this question that we we don't need to talk to him about shaving, right? <laughs> uh, look, you, your dad is he's a busy guy. I'm sorry that he's not teaching you how to shave. Uh, YouTube the shit. You yeah. know what? You you're gonna be your own man. YouTube sends this kid like a football in the mail on his birthday because <laughs> his dad was never there. 
So what's the advice? The advice is buy a new razor, then YouTube that shit. Yeah. <clears throat> My advice is to always YouTube that shit. YouTube that shit. Ah, uh, mercy. You do you. Yo, do you. <laughs> See if you, this is your first time listening, you just don't get those if you don't kind get of yo, jokes. Do you? Then then turn this shit off right now. <laughs> then don't do me a yeah. favor, okay? And just turn it off. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Um, we asked a couple weeks ago for people to submit questions not only via email, which have been coming in and been doing great, but also if you could record it. That would be even extra great because then we can hear the person's voice and it would just add another dimension to the question itself. Yeah, it's almost like we're taking a live call. That's right, which is inching us closer to our goal of having a live radio call-in show. Uh, This one comes from a teenager named Lisa. We really like this question, so we wanted to play it. Here you go. This is Lisa. Hi, Jake and Amir. Um, I am, well, you can call me whatever you want, but um, I am a teenager living in Washington, D.C., and basically my problem is that I'm pretty unsocial. I'm pretty unpopular, and most of the time I just don't have interest in talking to people, and I don't really have a ton of friends outside of my little group. I don't really hang out with anyone after school, which I feel like is something that's part of being a teenager or something. I don't know. So basically I was just wondering if you guys had any tips for, like, just in general, just being more social and how would you recommend going about this with your experience being a teenager since I'm kind of stuck in the middle of that? Thank you. Oh, my God. Doesn't that just break your freaking heart? Lisa, I'll be your best friend. Holy <laughs> shit, you're adorable. <laughs> Lisa sounds like the coolest teenager I know. Yeah, she is so mature and awesome. She does have a small group of friends, which is great. Yeah, why don't you hang out with those girls and guys after school, you know? The thing is, you're lost right now. You don't know what to do. But just the fact that you're aware enough to say that, oh, you're unsociable and, oh, you don't know how teenagers are supposed to act, like, that mean that already puts you in the top 1% of cool teenagers. Right, most the teenagers fact that you're self-aware. Right now, yeah, most teenagers right now would never even know how to, you know, do any of this stuff that you just did. So you're already much cooler than a bunch of the people that you're afraid to talk to. But you shouldn't be afraid to talk to them. That's correct. Because, you know what? They won't accept you. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Oh, right, right. <laughs> uh, you know, you. it's so easy to, like, there's, I just remember when I was in high school, like, I would do the same exact thing. I'd come home after school. I'd be like, well, nobody wants to hang out with me. But that's that's not true. So many kids in your high school right now are at home being like, I wish I was doing something after school today. Right. And you have... You know, that in common, that's like the most important thing, the desire to meet people, be friends and have fun. That's right. And, you know, it's hard to like hear that, like, oh, it'll be better when you get older because, you know, you want to fix this problem now. But like the fact that you I mean, you sound like such a cool teenage lady already that maybe there's other cool teenage ladies that you haven't even tried to talk to yet because you're afraid. But maybe if you just took that effort or took that small little risk, you can find someone that you do want to hang out with. And, you know, it doesn't take a lot of people. Like, you can have a group of, like, two or three friends that you're really close with, and that's that sort of will get you. Yeah, that's all you need. You only need one. Shoot. Yeah. Forget two. Two is like you have too many. Then you yeah. have to decide who do I hang out with Then tonight. next week you're going to be emailing us and being like, hey, I have too many friends. <laughs> How do I drop this loser? And then we'll be like, oh, wait, Lisa's kind of mean. Why did we give her advice? But if we can help at all, like, I don't know if me and Jake are at all – uh, known around your school or anything like that, but like if you need like a video from us or like a, a picture from us we'll, telling we you will anything, say we like we'll say we're your cousins, you know, just be like, oh, I know these guys, they're uh, they're my cousins. Yeah, we won't even say cousins. We'll say like your best friends because cousins okay. are like you know you're like forced to hang- be your cousin. We're gonna be like Lisa. Yeah, that's our girl. She's the coolest girl that I know. You should hang out with her too. Because- and you know what? We won't even be lying. That's right, because as of right now, you are the coolest teenager we know. So how does that sound, Lisa? So email us, the, so email us again, and if you have any favors we could possibly do, we will totally help you out. Thanks for – because you know what? You, you wrote the first – or you recorded the first audio question for a pretty cool podcast. So <laughs> Yeah, now what, let's build us up. Yeah, what <laughs> – Lisa, you're cool and all, but we're the best. <laughs> And I mean, how cool is it that me and Amir are giving you validation right now? Because I mean, you're pretty neat, but obviously, uh, 
wear the shit. <laughs> You're lucky we don't go to your high school because then you wouldn't be the coolest teen there. <laughs> so in summation, Lisa, we love you and we can help you out. Just uh, even more, if you want to email us, we'll do literally whatever you want. We'll come to your high school. <laughs> We're your biggest fans. Yeah, exactly. We'll come to your high school and give you a piggyback ride to every single class. We get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> We're even saying that. <laughs> There's a knock at the door right now. Holy shit. Are you kidding Officer? me? Officer? We were doing something. Oh. It's a three strike rule. You've, <laughs> you've offered too many piggybacks to teenagers, uh, Mr. Blumenfeld. <laughs> Captain, I don't even know how to throw this guy in jail. Will you want to tell me or should I YouTube that shit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Let's uh, move on to the next question. <clears throat> on to this the next. one is from Millhouse. Ooh. Hey, Amir and Jake. By the way, just a quick reminder, the email again is if I were you show at gmail.com. This is in the body of his email, actually. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> he's really helpful. All right, so Milhouse writes, I was asked to be a groomsman for a guy I wouldn't even consider being close friends with. Him and I have probably interacted enough to be considered acquaintances, so believe me when I say I was caught off guard. I'm honored, but I don't feel like I'd be his best choice. I've been a groomsman before for my best friend and was ready to take on the role but I don't feel the same way with this guy. What's the best way to turn him down? Oh, my God. That's so sad. <laughs> There's nothing sadder than asking a guy you don't really know to be your groomsman. Yeah, like you just – oh, my God. <laughs> hey, man, you want to like – let's uh, come over and let's get a beer sometime, you know, whatever. Really? Uh, and, sure, sure. And like if you want to be uh, – do you want to stand besides me, beside me at my wedding? Uh, oh, oh. Wait, sorry. What did you, I wouldn't even get a beer with you. What did you say? I was, was going to say no to the beer. <laughs> now you're uh, – I, yeah, I guess I'll come to your wedding. That's weird that you're even Well, not inviting. come to the wedding. It's, it's be in the wedding party. I want you there when I commit to my soulmate for <laughs> oh, eternity. Yeah. Jesus. It's actually really important to me. <laughs> me? You want? Okay. Uh, by I, the way, what's your last name? Because uh, <laughs> I'm just a very good acquaintance of yours. It's so weird. I, like this poor, this poor groom just doesn't have any, any real friends at all. Well, he's getting married, so he's got one. Yeah, I can imagine he's like talking to his wife and he's like, hey, uh, <laughs> she's like, all right, I have like, I have a lot, of, like, a lot of really good friends. I have like five to six bridesmaids. Do you think, like, oh, no problem. Yeah, no, I'm like really popular. So I got, bruh, shoot. <laughs> well, like, say who's like, who's going to be your like best man? <laughs> okay, well, yeah, um, my brother. Yeah, okay. okay. And, and then um, like, who's going to be like the groomsman? <laughs> okay, um, well, I, well, I know this guy from work. Uh, Roger? You know, his name's Millhouse. <laughs> So uh, I might ask him. Wait, what do you mean? You like know him from work? Like your like boys? Like your best friend? Like he's friends? like I just I've seen him a couple times at work, and I think he's chill. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so that's two right off the bat, and I'll I'll like rack my brain. I'm gonna storm some brain and come up with a few more. And if you want to like drop one of your bridesmaids, that'd actually be dope. Yeah, because then then at that point I can pick one up and call her one of my groomsmen. Because honestly, I think Millhouse is going to give me the big N-O. I think you could say no to something like this. But also, what does a groomsman have to do at a wedding? It's best man that like plans stuff and like gives a speech and all that. Yeah, but it's just weird to be part of it. Like standing up, being part of a wedding. Then you're, right. You're, I mean, you're like your, your acquaintance's wife's parents are like shaking your hands. Like, how am I involved in this? This is some sort of bad dream, I think. Right. Like you're standing up there, you walk down the aisle with one of one of the bride's cousins or sisters or friends. That's pretty insane. It's pretty intense. Should I like make new best friends or uh... You're at table 1. You don't know that guy. You're at table 1. You don't you barely know that guy and everybody else you know even less cuz like if he's your acquaintance, you definitely haven't met his family. Oh no. Man, I could you could um well, I mean Say you can't go to the wedding, or do you want you want you're trying to go to the wedding? No, he says, "What's the best way to turn him down?" Like entirely, like, he doesn't even want to go to the wedding. Yeah, say you're busy. Ah, uh, that's good. But what if it's like the wedding's like August twenty third, uh, twenty fourteen? What do you have then, dude? Oh, uh, sh- what? <laughs> I thought you said August twenty second. I'm in. <laughs> How do you know my schedule? We're casual acquaintances. Lay off me. I said no. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, geez. I don't know. It's weird because, like, being honest and being like, uh, you know, I just don't know you that well. I think I feel kind of weird. I think like, then you'll weird always you be me. like, then you like, you're not acquaintances anymore. Then you're just like, you're you won't be friends. But that's fine, probably too, right? I guess, yeah. This guy clearly doesn't give a crap about his close acquaintance. I'm trying to think of like an acquaintance of mine. If they were like, will you? 
I would probably, if I were you, I'd probably think it was so funny that I would do it. Right. Who do you like, think the equivalent for you would be? An acquaintance. An acquaintance that you'd be like, what? You want me to be in your wedding party? Um, well, I don't want, I feel like I would feel kind of bad naming somebody aloud right now that I consider an, an acquaintance and they're just <laughs> listening like, what the fuck? They're close enough that they're listening <laughs> to this podcast. Yeah, I think uh, probably like, geez, my, my buddy's roommate, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> Hank's just listening. Um, sorry, we hang out a lot. I would call you a friend, really. In fact, I'd call you my best friend <laughs> and fact, my best man. Will you marry me? <laughs> I don't know how to get gay married, but uh, perhaps we can YouTube that shit together for all of eternity. <laughs> YouTube that shit. <laughs> YouTube that shit is the new C's the cheese. <laughs> um, yeah. So I guess the best way to say, oh, here's a good one. A lot of weddings fall on the same days because there's only so many Saturdays in the summer during the year. So you, easily you could say my you cousin, no my brother, my uncle, right. my closer friend. I actually have a closer friend than you, if you can imagine that, sir. <laughs> uh, and, and we're get, and he's getting married. So, you know, I guess, unfortunately, I won't be able to attend yours. Yeah, I bet. He, I wonder if he's that hurt. I feel like if he's... At, Getting to acquaintances, maybe he's just like already asked a lot of people. <laughs> They've all seen. He's gotten ten no's. Yeah. <laughs> it's between uh, you being a groomsman and I guess me killing myself <laughs> because I have no friends. <laughs> Jeez, that's. I'm a just lot trying of to pressure. get married so I can get a hand job on a bus in Israel. <laughs> that's. I heard that's how you get chicks. Why yeah. is a married guy accepting just like a hand job? Is it? Are, if you're 33, isn't a hand job just like getting? <laughs> so I'm going backwards. I'm just, like I'm so, I have not thought about anything else aside from from a married penis being stroked by what I can only imagine is a teenager. <laughs> Why? Because she's like going to Israel on some church trip, and the kid is like, "Do I break up with the girl?" I feel like if he was any older, he'd, you know, no. Obviously, you do. <laughs> that, but that happens. Like when you're younger, like when shit happens in your relationship, you're like, "Do I? I, I don't know. This is like my fucking first relationship." Does this mean we break up? Right. I, like when I was in high school, it was like, oh, we fought. That means, uh, I think that means we're going to break up now. Is that like, a breakup thing? I don't know how it I works. kiss somebody. That, is that breakup worthy? Yeah. Like, you don't know. And then you kind of, you kind of decide what your, what your threshold is as you, <laughs> as you get older. I draw the line right before Jango on a bus. Right. Well, he's got to come, but yeah, yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot of this, a lot of the grooms, a lot of the groom get out of the wedding. That's what I always do. That's it. I feel bad for this groom, though. Asking a goddamn acquaintance. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how, like, we're going back, like, with uh, w- uh, with Lisa, right? Yeah. Lisa, we were like, yeah, we're going to get you friends. You're the best. You're so cool. And this groom is like, I need friends to be my, my, my groomsman. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, yo, lie to him. Get out of that <laughs> shit. He's a loser. What are we? Who are we? Or nothing. <laughs> just we just decide who's good and bad. But when you're a teenager, it's okay to be you know lost, confused, alone, not knowing quite how the world works yet. That's completely right. normal. If you're getting married, you're supposed to get it. Yeah. By the time you're married, you're past that age. You should have friends by now. And if you don't, don't ask acquaintance. Don't pe- put people under that. Yeah, geez, just a pressure. Lope. You you selfish <laughs> ass. That's funny. He's trying to get his wife to a low. He's trying to like. <laughs> Va- veil Let's make it, it really romantic. <laughs> Let's just get away, just us. Oh yeah, but all my friends and all your friends. Like, I know I have friends, <laughs> right? All of our friends. But wouldn't it be romantic to uh, just freaking get away? Just In does. fact. Do me. Let's let's make this weird sexy pact where we just let's, don't have any friends let's do ever it tonight. again. Let's just get married. I don't need I don't need a wedding. I just need fucking the the courthouse and you. Shit, won't Milhouse be offended? I mean, he's your best friend, isn't He'll he? He'll understand. I really think he will. <laughs> I bet in his weird, twisted brain, he thinks we've probably only interacted enough to be considered acquaintances or some shit. That's I don't how know. well I know Milhouse. <laughs> Milhouse is dumb like that. I bet it caught him off guard. And I actually he's... hate Milhouse. Forget him. He's never going to be a groomsman. Let's elope. <laughs> oh, mercy. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, though, Lisa, email us. We want to help. <laughs> um, all right. Let's get to – let's try to squeeze in one last question. This all one's right. a funny question. May not have a lot of funny advice, but I just wanted to read it. Ha- title, hashtag Mallard Problems. So you know it's good right <laughs> off the bat. Uh, we'll call this guy Gil. 
Dear Amir and Jake, I was hanging out with my friend in the park. We were playing frisbee and generally having a good time. Suddenly, a small brace of ducks walked out of the woods and into the clearing we were in. My friend took off in a sprint after the poor birds and chased them until he had narrowed down one. After about 20 minutes of chasing the duck, it was too tired to run anymore. It eventually collapsed onto the ground, and upon further investigation, he had died. I don't know if he had a heart attack or something, but it was dead. We left the lifeless mallard in the field and went home right away. It's been a few days, and he keeps bringing up the duck. Kids in school now think we're both duck killers, but I don't even like to think about it. If it goes on like this, I don't know what I'll do. What should I do to feel better about this situation without looking like a quack? This is amazing. <laughs> I just love that. I'm like, I think he said mallards, ducks, birds. So much duck language. <laughs> uh, a, a brace of ducks. Uh, yeah, is that even? I, I almost, brace of ducks. I meant to look that up to see if that's even the correct like nomenclature. Like a murder of crows, yeah. the pride of lions, <laughs> a, brace. a brace of ducks, I guess. It's actually more clear to me now than ever that the person who wrote this is a duck. <laughs> <laughs> or a dog. <laughs> I chased a duck until it died. <laughs> I love a dog feeling guilty about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm a I'm a proud golden retriever, and I accidentally exhausted a duck to death. I'm the dog from Duck Hunt, and I accidentally. <laughs> um, shit. I guess like I mean, part of me wants to scold you for killing a duck, and the other one, I the other part of me, I guess, wants to tell you, you know. It, Sounds like it wasn't a totally healthy duck. Maybe it was near death anyway. Yeah, I feel like this is how vegans hunt. Like they're not they're not allowed to kill an animal. This, this duck died of somewhat natural causes. <laughs> I can eat it now. That's what imitation duck is at vegan restaurants. It's just a duck that was killed by chasing it to a heart attack. Because the duck really enjoyed the chase. It died happy. That's the most expensive duck on a really fancy menu. This a mallard. So we have a small brace of duck that was murdered by you know exhaust it to death wow. and that's served over field greens yeah, the adrenaline and... is still coursing through its veins <laughs> so it makes it that's very gonna be like chugging a five-hour energy actually <laughs> we also had a cow that uh, killed itself when we showed him photos of other cows being eaten by humans so that's five hundred dollars a plate <laughs> a cow that died by its own hand <laughs> just really expensive meat that still was not killed. natural causes because you brought it onto the cow <laughs> you did you you tricked it into doing that <laughs> Oh, what do I do to feel better about the situation? I guess you can say that, hey, millions of ducks are killed every year for food, uh, and those were done on purpose. Who are these people picking on me? Ask every single one of them if they're a vegetarian. If they have ever eaten meat, then what they're doing is worse than what you did. There you go. That's a, that's a good way to sleep. They didn't stare the there. duck in the eyes as it died. <laughs> it's lifeless, lifeless beak. <laughs> the lifeless mallard. <laughs> it's like a really boring episode of uh, Looney Tunes where Bugs just t- chases Daffy until it dies of a heart attack. <laughs> My heart exploded. <laughs> Suffer and succotash. Uh, is that Daffy? I think so. <laughs> Suck- Suffer and succotash, that's Daffy, right? Ooh. Email us in. Let us know. Suffer and succotash. That, that's, that's Daffy. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like that. Actually, the duck on the menu is served with suffering succotash, so it ends up working out. Wow. Um, great emails. Great questions. Keep them coming, guys. Amazing answers. More than anything else, we're the best, <laughs> and you guys are the worst. It's going to turn into some like weird cult. <laughs> All right, signing off. This is God. <laughs> Worship us. Kanye West hosting a podcast. <laughs> Um, Hashtag Jesus. <laughs> we are out of time. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Every week, our episode gets more listens than the one before it, which means you guys are doing you know an awesome job of enjoying the show and also telling your friends to enjoy it. And we appreciate it so, so, so much. Without you guys, there wouldn't even be a show. Honestly, if only 10,000 people listened to every episode, yeah. I would have quit long, long without ago. Without you guys, there wouldn't be a show. But also without us, there wouldn't be a show. Yes, more so specifically sort of, without 50, us. It's 50-50. Don't get a big head about it. 50-50 <laughs> like, between me and Jake. Right. And then, so well, that's 98% of the without pie. Without us, there's no show, obviously. obviously. Yeah, like, yeah. Anybody can listen to a podcast, right. but no. it takes like two heroes to come out of the word works and buy a microphone to record one. Yeah, we're... I wouldn't say heroes. I'd say gods. Yeah, you know? because heroes Hero are God. mortal. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we are, I don't know, what. not immortal. What's beyond that? Because immortal <laughs> implies that you're a thing. What's going to live forever and also have always lived forever? <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for listening. And thank you for emailing in. And we're going to end the show with another theme song that was submitted. And this one comes from 
da 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 <clears throat> da 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 is how <laughs> da, 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 da 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 you guys have ever heard the the uh, extended version of that song it's nine hours of horn <laughs> nine hours of horn and then like 30 seconds of you crying right before you give up <laughs> i'll never find this email you know what found it I was really about to go off on a, <laughs> on a very, very mean tangent, so I'm happy you, you interrupted. I yep. am going to still go on it, so just give me two seconds. <laughs> Jesus. This one is from the Super Mercado Brothers. Thanks for listening, everyone. If I were you. If there's a problem that you can't solve, Jake and Amir will gladly resolve. You do you and I'll do me. What do you expect? The show's for free. Seize the cheese.